The views and opinions expressed in this video are solely those of the fat bearded vinyl guy and should not be taken seriously by sane people. Greetings, friends, neighbors, and fellow music fans. I am Matt, the Fat Bearded Vinyl Guy, and welcome to The Vinyl Lair. I have returned to my regular programming with another World's Worst Record review. Today, it is the self-titled debut record from KISS. Now, before I get into today's record, I have just a couple of things. First, go to fatbeardedvinylguy.com, where you'll find links to the social media. Here, give me a thumbs up, subscribe. If you like what I'm doing, tell your friends. If you don't, tell your enemies, just as long as you tell someone. Second, small programming note, I plan on moving in a different direction for future World's Worst Record reviews. I want to start reviewing albums that may or may not be on everyone's radar. I have a few albums in the darker recesses of my collection that I will be digging out in the next few weeks. As always, if you have a request, message me on my Facebook page or leave a comment below. Finally, I would like to start a new series, yes, another one, where I play Devil's Advocate. This one is reliant on audience participation, and that means you. So if you have an album that you love, let me know and I will tear it to shreds. Conversely, if you have an album you despise, let me know and I will make it sound like it was the greatest album ever. Once again, just message me on my Facebook page or leave a comment below. Now that that's out of the way, we can finally talk some KISS. It's about time, right? The record was released in February of 1974 and was one of the first releases on the then-fledgling Casablanca Records. In fact, the original catalog number was NBLP 7001. NB for Neil Bogart, the label's founder, LP for the LP format, and 7001 was just the number they, they started with. You know, it's kind of like starting your checks with 1000 like anyone writes checks anymore. Now all the songs on the original pressings were written and played in the band's early club days, with some written during Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley's short time with Wicked Lester, the predecessor to Kiss. Think of Wicked Lester to Kiss as the Yardbirds to Led Zeppelin. Except the Yardbirds actually did something worth noting. Now, I said the early pressings because track one on side two, Kissin' Time, was added later on, after it was recorded and released as a promo single for a kissing contest to promote the band. Now, apparently kissing contests were a thing in the early 70s. After the single release, the song was added to the album, even though there was an agreement saying that it would not. Now, on one hand, I'm kind of surprised that the band didn't sue, but figuring both the band and the label were in their respective infancies, I'm also not surprised they kind of let it go. Now, my history with this album starts in the early 1990s. I picked up a used cassette copy at Apple Emporium in downtown Appleton. Now, that was a store that I spent quite a bit of money at. I bought a lot of music and a lot of t-shirts in that store in my high school years. And appropriately enough, years later at the same location, there was a record store there called Top Spins, where I also spent quite a bit of time. Sadly, that store closed because the owner moved to Wausau. The commute was apparently too long. I don't know. It's a shame because the owner was a really good guy. He had some good stuff there. But back to Kiss again. At least half of the songs on this album were staples of the KISS live show for decades. Deuce was frequently an opener, Cold Gin was a fan favorite, Firehouse was the song Gene Simmons did his fire breathing, and Black Diamond featured Peter Criss's rising drum set. Now back to me, again. I had a Lutheran school education, and my grade school days were in the 1980s, so naturally I was forced to watch videos on how rock music was from the devil. So when I got this album, it was clearly out of rebellion, but the music didn't sound demonic, neither did the lyrics. Clearly this was a case of people passing judgment when it says in a very good book that you should not pass judgment lest you get judgment passed upon you. Now that said, this is one of my favorite KISS records, and even though I've heard it dozens of times, I never get tired of it. 
Now, I would like to find an original pressing that doesn't have Kissin' Time on there, but that's probably a little too rich for my blood. But I do take donations, though, so if you want to send one to me, I will not say no. Now, Kiss is one of my all-time favorite bands, and someone else I know who really loves Kiss does the Ridiculous Rock Record Review podcast. Aaron Martell covered the first Kiss record in episode one of the R4 podcast. That's how much he likes it. He goes track by track in an amount of depth that my lazy ass cannot or more likely will not go. I'll leave a link to that episode in the description. That is it for now. FatBeardedVinylGuy.com is the website with links to the social media, like and share. Here, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and leave a comment on your thoughts and memories of the First Kiss record. Also, if you have a request for a future World's Worst Record review, message my Facebook page or leave a comment. If you have a request for a Devil's Advocate video, one that you love that I can crap on or one that you hate I can gush over, you can contact me on Facebook or in the comments below. Till next time, stay gold and I will catch you on the B-side. Seeing if the stuff is in or out of the way. Mm.